Welcome to the podcast Beer and People from Beer Story Brew House. Beer Stories is normally a YouTube channel with tips, guides, and how to videos for homebrewing, but I also do interviews with exciting people in the beer industry, and these are very suited for the podcast format, and you'll find them all right here. Welcome to Beer Stories from Beer Story Brew House. This video is a beer battle between uh, St. Bernardo's and the Svetan 12. There are many people that, claims, uh, that claim that uh, Westfleta and 12 is the best beer in the world, so we're going to take a closer look at that. There are also some people that says that uh, St. Bernardo's and Westfleta and 12 is the same beer. So, is it the same beer? We're going to find out. If you don't want to miss uh, any videos from Beer Stories, Please click like and subscribe down the corner. It'll help out the channel and you get the news videos directly in your YouTube feed. And also find me on Facebook and Instagram. Well, so some people claim this place is the best beer in the world. And some people claim it's the same beer. Uh, I know the answer to that, but uh, we're going to find out in this video. And I'm also going to tell you why I have a Vesmale standing right here, because uh, these beers are all in a, some kind of weird threesome. They are intertwined on, on several occasions, um, but I'll get back to that. Well, first of all, um, are these beers uh, the same beer? Well, um, no. <laughs> you can tell already. Uh, by the alcohol, um, St. Bernard's is uh, 10% ABV, Westfletan is 10.2 uh, ABV. So uh, that's a short way to answer the question, um, but uh, I'll get back to that because uh, there might be a logic uh, reason for that actually, in the way these are intertwined. Um, so. Westfletan, they started brewing the monks, uh, the Trappist monks from uh, from San Sixtus. Uh, they founded Westfletan in 1831. Just, uh, yeah, they made cheese before and then they started making beer also. And it's just for themselves and uh, to sell in their guest house as well. And they continued to do that um up until uh, 1931 and um, then they wanted to sell to the public as well and they did that for a few years but uh, I, pr I, I think they couldn't uh, keep up with the demand uh, or something like that because St. Bernardus was actually started in 1946 uh, with one purpose in mind to brew Besfleta uh, to commercialize the beer and sell it for the Trappist monks. So, San Bernardus, they brewed Westfleta from uh, 1946 to 1992. And that's why there are many people that says it's the same beer. Um, with good reason. But... Uh, but here comes the tricky part, and here comes this Malle in the picture. Because uh, the contract with uh, St. Bernardus Brewery, the, um, it ended in uh, 1992. And because of the law uh, was changed uh, regarding to when you can call a beer a Trappist beer, uh, it changed, so they had to bring back the production to Westfletan Monastery, to the sixth, uh, to the Sanct Sixtus Monastery in Westfletan. Um, so they had to build a new brewery there. And they had help from a monk from uh, Vesmale. And uh, he helped them tweak the recipe and set up the whole uh, brewery to, uh, to match the quality and the taste and everything of the Westfletan. And they actually ended up using the Vesmale yeast. San Bernardos hasn't changed uh, since probably when they started brewing it. Um, 
And since it was a Les Flitter brewery to start off with, they are probably using the original Les Flitter yeast for the St. Bernardos. And for the Les Flitter, they are using the Vesmale yeast. And that's why I know it's not the same beer. And when you think about this a little, uh, this could actually explain why uh, there's a difference in alcohol. If it is, in fact, the same recipe, um, then we know it's a different yeast, and that could mean something for the uh, attenuation, and maybe why the San Bernardos, Bernardos is only uh, 10.0 10 uh, ABV, and this Flitan is 10.2 ABV. So that could be an explanation. Um, we don't know that for sure, but uh, but we know for a fact that uh, we don't know for a fact. But we know we know this is Ves, uh, Vesmali yeast. We know this was brewed at San Bernardos. We know they haven't changed anything. So why shouldn't this be the original Vesfletan yeast? Yeah, think about that. But. So it's not the same beer. Which one is the better beer? And is Vesfletan the best beer in the world? Well, if you go on uh, rate beer, you can see that uh, San Bernardo's has uh, 4.24 out of 5 points. Vesfletan has got 4.43 out of 5. So they are pretty close. But uh, this one has been on top of rate beer for many, many years and is still in top three over the 50, yeah, over all beer that hasn't, they're still in production. It's number three. And uh, I think it's number four of all time. Um, so that, that's pretty amazing. Uh, and it just says something about the quality that these monks uh, can brew with. Well, a Travis beer is not actually brewed, well, not everywhere, it's not brewed by monks. Um, but West Fitton is probably one of the breweries, Trappist breweries, where the monks have has the most influence on the product and are most involved in the product. Uh, it's also the Trappist beer with the lowest production. They only produce about 6,000 hectoliters per year. Um, and until recently, you can only get the beer at the monastery and the guest house. You could buy it there and bring home, but uh, but now they are exporting. Uh, I can buy this in Denmark. It costs a lot of money, but I can buy this in Denmark. Uh, this is a larger production. I can get this, yeah, pretty much uh, everywhere. Uh, all good bottle shops in Denmark probably has this one. Um, this one is harder to find, but you can find it. Um, and that also keeps up the hype because it's 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 a rare beer. It's not rare, rare, but it's rare. Um, if I want one tomorrow, I just I can't go out and just find one. So so it's a rare beer, uh, and that kind of yeah builds up the hype as well. Um, but in my eyes. It, it can't be a hype if it's been up there for, yeah, since uh, 1931 or something like, like that. Um, it's not a hype anymore. It's a good beer. And it really is a good beer. So, it's not the same beer. Um, Miss Flitten rates a little bit higher on the rate beer. But, uh, yeah, but what do I think? Which one is the better beer? Ah, oh, it's just, that smells so good. Uh, roasted caramel, uh, raisins, um, a little booze, uh, sweet booze, sherry-like. Ah, it's just amazing. It's, it's, yeah, it is, it's amazing. Okay, this one has the same characters, but it's definitely more fruity. Kind of a plum. Banana? Yeah, brown banana. 
And then also, uh, I can really smell the booze here, it's a little bit maybe. Yeah, a little bit sherry note. And also that roasted caramel. Yeah, also, it's also amazing. It really is. But right there, that tells me, well, this yeast, that, that, that ripe banana, that uh, brown banana flavor, uh, or aroma, that's the yeast. So it's definitely not the same yeast. Oh, it's an amazing beer. It really is. Yeah, I still get the fruit, um, I get the caramel, I get the sherry notes, I get the, I get the plum, the syrup, molasses, yeah, uh, and I, I, I can't really get, I, I don't get an alcohol burn or boozy, it's not there, it's a, uh, it's kind of uh, fresh. Uh, mm. It's a fantastic beer. I still get, yeah, the same notes that, that I got in the aroma. I got the raisin. I got the I, I got the caramel. I got the sherry notes. It's not it's not burning or anything. It's just a a warm a warm blanket, a warm silk going through my 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 mouth. It has just a, a hint of some herbal, uh, but but it's not spicy. It's not spicy, but and of course it's sweet. This is also sweet. Um, it's definitely not the same beer. They're close. They're familiar. I can see the whole threesome going on here. Um, I can taste it. I think this is uh, higher carbonated. Yeah, the big difference here is San Bernardo's is more fruity, definitely more fruity. It has this uh, brown banana, ripe banana flavor to it. And that's the biggest difference, I think, in terms of color. <clears throat> I would say it's the same. Um, yeah, it is. The head retention is better on the Vesfleten, but I think it's it's higher carbonated. Um, so that might explain it. The bubbles just coming up and keeping the head retention going. Um, okay, so if I should pick one, I would pick uh, this fleet hand, but but it'd be close. Normally on untapped, I give this uh, five. Um, I would do that again. I think it's an amazing beer. Um, Sankt Bernardus, I would give, if I had to, I would give it slightly lower. Um, I think if I didn't compare those two, if I just had one of these, I'd probably rate it five also. But now, knowing, just tasting them side by side, I would say, uh, well, four, 
point uh, seventy five uh, for the San Bernardos. Just great beers, uh, yeah. A little fun fact: um, in eighteen fifty, some monks uh, they probably left uh, uh, Saint Sixtus uh, or Vespliza and uh, actually started a small brewery that you might know called Chimay. Uh, so all the Belgic, all the big uh, Abbey ales, uh, Abbey beers, Trappist beers, they have some kind of intertwined, all of them. Uh, and, it, and, it's, and it is amazing how they can produce so great beers in such a huge quantity. Still amazes me. Uh, this is definitely the smallest Travis brewery, uh, probably one of the smallest uh, Abbey breweries in in Belgium. Um, San Bernardo's is um, it's way bigger, uh, but they can still just hold a quality that, yeah, I find it. I, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. It really is. So I think I got everything now. Um, yeah, uh, well, St. Bernardo's, they started actually uh, brewing uh, in cool chips, uh, open ferment fermenters. Um, and then they, when they stopped using cool chips, they just have, had open fermenters. But now, um, since 1992, when they started brewing at Vesplitan again, I, th I think I read they had uh, six new breweries. Uh, <laughs> but they still only produce... 6,000 hectoliters per year, um, but now it's in a fully automated brewery, uh, very modern, um, and so is this, by the way, and so is this, by the way, but, uh, but yeah, um, but the monks are deeply involved in the brewing process, uh, I think they have a head brewer there who is really, really good. Um, I, I think I read they also had a, a, a yeast lab or, or a beer lab uh, actually, but uh, but it's a uh, yeah it's a fantastic beer and it's a fantastic story. The whole the nostalgia behind this beer is just amazing. I think uh, behind all the Travis beers, but especially this one. So how I hold this very dear to my heart. Uh, and maybe that's why I rate it higher than this one. Maybe. No, it's not. I like this better. Uh, the, the banana, I like the banana, but I, I think I, I, when I drink one of these, I will get a little tired of it. I could drink several of these, uh, this split time in a row. So, yeah. A little fun fact to, uh, to end the video. Every 10,000 bottle, the monk, he gives uh, a wink with his, uh, with his left eye. So if you get a, a St. Bernardo's apt 12 with a, a monk that uh, winks, you know it's a one out of 10,000 bottles. That's a fun fact. Um, yeah, write it down in the comments if you've ever seen one in, in real life. I haven't. But uh, that was all for, for this video. Um, I hope you found it entertaining. I, th I think this history is just awesome. That they brewed this one, they probably still have this one's yeast. This one has this one's yeast, and yeah, it's just, I think it's awesome. So, um, if you stick around to the end, there'll be two videos up here that YouTube wants you to see. Um, I'll be really happy if you click like and subscribe down here. Uh, you get the newest videos in the YouTube feed and you won't miss any of my videos. Um, and also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And if you have any questions, write to me down in the uh, comments uh, or write to me through Facebook, Instagram or, or whatever. You can also find me on my web page, uh, beerstories.dk. So yeah, have a happy beer out there. Thanks for listening to the podcast Beer and People from Beer Stories. Visit my YouTube channel, Beer Stories, for how-to videos for homebrewing, tips, tricks, guides, interviews, and much more. You can also follow my blog on Instagram or Facebook, or visit my website, beerstories.dk.